forgiving because Allah Jalla wa Ala, even though Allah doesn't forget, Allah still forgives. It's impossible for Allah to forget. However, it's possible for a human being, it's possible for a human being to forget. Yet human beings don't forget and they don't forgive. Uh, and, and, and that's the thing. When, when, uh, when it said that um, God was, uh, creation was created in, uh, in the form of uh, you know, the, the attributes of the divine, or rather the, the attributes of the divine are within the creation. This is what's said. So, and of course, by attributes of the divine, we don't mean exactly the attributes of the divine. For example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge, we also have knowledge. <clears throat> but it's not the same thing. The only similarity between Allah's knowledge and our knowledge is the, is the term knowledge. The meaning is completely unique. So Allah's knowledge is completely divine and transcendent. And we don't understand what it means when it comes to Allah's knowledge. Because Allah Jalla wa Ala has knowledge of the possible, uh, the possibilities those things that are necessary and also the impossibilities. Allah has knowledge of those things, that which is necessary, i.e. Himself. Allah has knowledge of the possibilities, all the possible outcomes that could ever exist, Allah has the knowledge of that. And Allah has knowledge of all of the impossibilities too. So Allah's knowledge extends to impossibilities. So Allah's, and that's as much as we can understand the knowledge of God. Yes? So the knowledge of God is that it's divine, it's transcendent, it's something that we don't understand. <coughs> Humans have knowledge too. One can argue and say, well, we have an attribute that is shared with God. No, the only thing that is shared is the name knowledge, is the term knowledge that we understand. So God has power. Does a human being have power? Yes. But the power that Allah has is completely different to the power that the human being has. The only thing that is shared in this is the term power. Allah has life, it's divine life. These are all the sifatul ma'ani. These are all the uh, conceptual attributes of Allah. All of these things, human beings have them too. But not the way Allah has them. So Allah, yani, qudra, irada, ilm, haya, sama', basar, kalam. These are the seven conceptual attributes according to the sha'ira. And the maturidi actually, uh, the, the schools of theology, they say uh, divine power, divine uh, will, divine life, divine knowledge, divine sight, and divine speech. Okay, or divine hearing as well, sorry. So these are the seven that I mentioned. All of these are attributes of Allah, but they are attributes of Allah and the similarity between Allah's attributes and, and us and what we have, because we have power, we have will, we have knowledge, we have life, we have hearing, we have sight and we have speech. But the only similarity is the term. The meaning is completely different. So there are certain af'al of Allah Jalla wa'ala, like forgiveness and like love, right? That we understand to whatever degree we understand it too. Allah loves His human creation. And there are certain ahadith which tell us the capacity of Allah's love, but it doesn't really fulfill the true love that Allah has. For example, there's a hadith which mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the, the, the creation more than, uh, more than the mother loves his child. So Allah loves the creation more than a mother will love uh, her child. Now we know, we can almost quantify, almost quantify the amount of love a mother has for her child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it's mentioned in the hadith rather, not just as, more than, more than a mother loves her child, Allah loves the creation even more than that. So to some degree, that love is tried to, meaning somebody who can possibly try to encapsulate Allah's love for creation, but even then, it's beyond our co comprehension. Why? Because yani, he is al-mukharafatul al-hawadith. And laysa kamithli shay is nothing like creation. Just like that, Allah Ta'ala has his attribute of forgiveness. Or a name of forgiveness, which of course is manifested through his attribute. The attribute of forgiveness, which is Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala's attribute, which is a divine attribute, is not the same as our attribute of forgiveness. However, if you want to find yourself in the court of Allah, as the one who is loved by Allah, you should try to do all of those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do. For example, oh Allah ta'ala does. For example, Allah ta'ala forgives. And that's a noble attribute as mentioned in the Quran. Therefore, the human being should also forgive. Just the way Allah forgives you when you commit a sin, that's the way you should also forgive people when they wrong you. That's the way it should be. Do you have to? Not necessarily. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He says, uh, Ahsin, 
كما أحسن الله إليك أحسن be good this is an advice given to one of the tyrants of the time of Fir'aun so in the, in the time of Fir'aun there were three tyrants Fir'aun himself there was Haman who was like the political um, uh, the, the, they say the, the military leader of the time Haman Haman was the military leader of the time and then you had Qarun. These are the three people mentioned in the time of Fir'aun, the, the villains. Okay, Qarun was uh, like a, the best way to understand Qarun. Qarun was like a, an agent, a snake. He was like the uncle, uh, you know them uh, prevent type of guys. Yeah, who'll, who'll, do, who'll do things, who'll report back to Fir'aun. Qarun was uh, an individual actually who um, had so much money, so much wealth that he'd go around floating and, and showing off his wealth. Allah Ta'ala speaks about him in the Quran at the end of Surah Al-Qasas إِنَّ قَارُونَ مِنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَى فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ Qarun was from the people of Moses though. The difference is Qarun wasn't from the, the palace of the Fir'aun. He was from the people of Moses. So uh, it's like Fir'aun grabbed him and said, listen, you're going to work for me. You're going to be my agent. Even though these are your people, even though they're your cousins, yeah? And even though you're, they're your relatives, you're going to work for me. So Qarun goes, yeah, yeah, safe, I'll work for you. And Fir'aun gave him so many treasures, so, so, many, so much money that his keys were so heavy that people would have to carry the keys to his treasures. That's how uh, wealthy he was. So he'd walk around. He'd walk around saying, yeah, yeah, I minted me. Yeah, I got so much money. And people, you know, would look. And people who had weak iman, they'd want to be like him. They wanted, they'd be like, oh, this guy's got so much money. Yeah, we want to be like, we, we want to be like this. And Allah Ta'ala mentions this in the Quran. But then there are those who understood that this dunya is transient, this dunya doesn't mean much. And they were like, yeah, whatever. And Allah Ta'ala says that when we destroyed Qarun eventually, okay, those people who were in awe of him, they didn't know where to put their faces. But those people who knew that this is nothing, you know, they were fine with it. Qarun, this individual, was given advice by his own people. His own cousins were saying to him, listen, and this, this advice is incredible. You, you, you can have a full khutbah on this. One of the, uh, the pieces of advice that was given to him was لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفرحين Don't be overly excited. Uh, the word farah in the Arabic language literally refers to you know when a person's always he's excited to the point where he's always looking for the next high. Uh, it doesn't mean to be happy because people uh, can take this literally and they'll be like oh don't be happy. So people will go around saying oh, Allah says don't be happy so you're not allowed to be happy. The word farah in the Arabic language means to be so um, engrossed in the highs of this life that you don't know how to embrace your sadness. And, and, and through the mafhum khalif actually, uh, in this, of this particular verse is that there, are, there will be times in your life that you'll be sad or that will probably be depressing or will be upsetting and you have to learn to embrace them. A lot of the time you find people who just want farah all the time. Allah says, لا تفرح. Don't be that type of guy. For example, let me give you a modern day example. There are people who, they can't sit alone in silence. They can't sit in reflection. They don't like to be alone. All they want to do is, they want the next high all the time. So say for example, they've come back from a trip. They've had, a, uh, they've had fun. They just want to book the next one. They're always looking for some high. And there are people who are getting you know, so diseased that even a moment of... A moment of, how do you say, being sober is not enough. So they'll take drugs. Yeah? Or they'll have weed. And you know that, that little ting in your mind and you, that happiness that you find when you, have, when you have a spliff or whatever. Never had one before, by the way. This is what I've been told. Right? That, that little, you just want to, because it, it, it's that you want that uh, hormone to continuously, um, you, you know, be in your life. You just want it all the time. That's what it means. Farah. And they say, La tafrah. Just because you've got money and you're, you've got this high all the time, you know, people can't take being sober when they're going through difficulties. So what they do, they either take drugs or they drink alcohol. Or they're always looking for the next time. لا تفرح. Don't be that type of guy. إن الله لا يحب الفرحين. Allah does not love the one who is always like that. That's one advice they give. Then, وَبَتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ So, uh, be the one. Uh, or take that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and do not forget the akhirah. And I think uh, um, that's what it is. My, my phone's there. Uh, 
someone get the verse out for me. Wabtaghi fi ma'atak Allah. There you go. So it's Adar al Akhira. So I read it right. Wabtaghi fi ma'atak Allah Adar al Akhira. So don't don't take or don't run towards that which Allah Ta'ala has given you and leave it for this dunya. Work for the Akhirah. Work, there's a, basically, they're trying to make him realize that there is an afterlife. So this, this, these pieces of golden advice. The next one, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Don't forget your portion in this world. We don't have an issue with the fact that you're, mun, uh, you're, uh, you're, you know, you're rich. I don't have an issue with the fact that you're rich. They're saying, his cousins are saying to him, listen, we know you're minted. We know you got money. We know you got, you know, you got pee. It's cool. That's your portion in this world. And you shouldn't like give it to people either. At the end of the day, this is your portion in this world. If someone's done you over in this world, you have every right to go and get your uh, get your qisas or get your re- retaliation. Allah Ta'ala says, don't. You know, there's those people, there's the, the Sufi mindset, they say. So, you're all, don't worry, you're all, I'll give all my money away. I don't want anything in this world. You, there's a fine line between completely giving everything away. Okay? And of course, it depends on context. And, and completely hating this dunya, that type of zuhud, there's a, comp- there's a fine end between that and actually understanding that this dunya is there for your benefit. And Allah Ta'ala has treated this dunya for your benefit. Allah has treated for you everything in this world. You get those type of people like, Yara, chodo yara, dunya kare, ya, we don't care about the dunya. I mean, th- 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 some people are hypocrites because they'll say all of that, yet they're still you know, collecting all the money to make their kotiya back home. You get them to have people. Then you get those people who genuinely believe that dunya doesn't mean anything. And they don't care for their children. They don't care for their, you know, whatever they have. They give, they give everything away. And then badij, they think, like, you know, and then people will say to them, well, they'll really come to the realization. What have you left? What have you saved? Oh. And they think, oh, our ajr is Allah. Allah Ta'ala says, well, I think so now, come in dunya. You have a portion in this dunya. Don't forget it. Allah's given you that. Let me give you an example. Somebody's, you know, doing you over, or somebody said something to you, or whatever, and you think, Chodo yara. Kya yaad raksi? forget the guy, let's just forgive him, and even though he's done something really, really bad, or let's just let him off the, the hook or the loose, it doesn't really matter, or don't worry, you know, these things happen. At the end of the day, you've got to retaliate to some degree. Of course, you do it within limits. But, Wala tansa nasiba ka min dunya. Don't forget your portion in this dunya, Allah Ta'ala says. And then the, 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 the point here, Ahsin, they say to him, they say to Qarun, be good man. Ahsin, why should you be good? Why should you be good? That's the question. Because Allah is good to you, no? Ahsin, kama ahsan Allah ilayk. Be good just the way Allah has been good to you. So therefore you be good to other people. And under this principle, this becomes a, a proverb in, in the Arabic language. It's a verse of the Quran and it becomes a maxim too. And they say the a legal, almost like a legal, um, not a legal maxim, but like a, a spiritual maxim. Be good. Maxim basically means a rule for life. Be good to people. Be good to others. Be good to everything because Allah is good to you. Ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. So when it comes to these concepts, loving people, have love for people because Allah loves you. Forgiving people. Forgive people because Allah forgives you. Ahsin kam ahsan Allah ilayk. So these are the, the concept of tawbah in and of itself. So let's quickly read these two hadith and then we'll conclude. Wa'an Abi Musa uh, Abdullah ibn Qaysin uh, al-Ash'ari An al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Inna Allah ta'ala yabsutu yadahu bil-layli liyatuba masi'u al-nahar wa yabsutu yadahu bil-nahar liyatuba masi'u al-layl hatta tatlu'a al-shamsu min maghribiha Okay, beautiful hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah Ta'ala spreads out his hand. And by yad, we'll get into a discussion of Kalam Dunya al saying there. By his hand, it means his generosity. It doesn't mean his hand. Okay? Um, or it, I, I mean, depending on which position you want to take that. It, just, it, it may mean his hand, but his hand is not like what we think a hand is. Okay? How about that? Allah Ta'ala spreads out his generosity, okay? In the night, for the one who seeks forgiveness, in, uh, or, or in order rather, in order to forgive the one who sins in the day. Allah will spread out his mercy and his forgiveness 
at night time for the one who has committed a sin in the day and he's seeking forgiveness. And he will spread out his mercy and forgiveness and his generosity in the day for the one who is seeking forgiveness for committing a sin at night. Until, and Allah will continue to do this until the sun rises from the west. What does that mean? Does the sun rise from the west? No. Where does it rise from? East. The sun rises from the east. Will the sun rise from the west? Yes. When? The day of judgment. When the day of judgment is about to commence, the sun will rise from the west. And the, the hadith is saying, Allah at night time will forgive. And in the day will forgive. For the one who sinned in the day, Allah will forgive him at night. And for the one who sinned in the night, Allah will forgive him in the day until Yawm Al Qiyamah. That's the hadith. Okay? Now, uh, what does this mean? Uh, Ibn Kamal Pasha, Rahmahullah Ta'ala says, Yaqbalu Tawbah min al Muslimin al Layla wa Naharan hatta tafru al Shams al Maghribiha wa Lakhtas Qubulaha bi Waktin or Qubulaha bi Waktin. He says that the meaning of this hadith is that Tawbah will be accepted from Muslims every single night and every single day until the, until the Day of Judgment. Tawbah will continuously be accepted. It will never not be accepted. And there is no specific time. There is no specific time wherein Allah Ta'ala stops accepting your Tawbah. You can make Tawbah at any given specific, any time you want and Allah Ta'ala will always accept your Tawbah. Uh, so again it says the spreading of, of the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in regards to the acceptance of Tawbah. Uh, and then there's some more descri description in regards to that. But that's the hadith that we wanted to mention. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept um, our, our forgiveness or rather <laughs> forgive us to accept our, our Tawbah, accept our turning to Him uh, and, and forgive us for our sins. And forgive us for our shortcomings. And we ask Allah Ta'ala to allow us to be good. Give us a tawfiq to be good. So that just the way he is good to us. And we ask Allah Ta'ala to grant us proximity to him. And his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa akhir dawaya an alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. Any announcements? Anything?